Welcome to this daily devotion for Thursday, August 5th, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, along with Pastor Wesley. We serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and welcome you to this time where we can grow in love of God and neighbor. Our theme this week has been facing life's uncertainties. And so take a breath. And let's hear the invocation as we step into the presence of God. Almighty God, who always moves with clarity of will and singleness of purpose, help me to live and work with certainty in an uncertain world. Light a lamp before me so that my feet do not stumble. Make my paths clear so I may never wander from your chosen way. I pray in the name of Jesus who comes to make your way clear before our eyes. Amen. Our theme psalm is Psalm 127. Pick up in verse 3 today. No doubt about it, children are a gift from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a divine reward. The children born when one is young are like arrows in the hands of a warrior. The person who fills a quiver full of them is truly happy. They won't be ashamed when arguing with their enemies in the gate. God bless the reading of the psalm today. It's a strange, uh, it's a strange, uh, strange passage. <laughs> this uh, first couple of verses and second couple of verses don't often really seem related, but if we understand this is a pilgrim song likely written by or in the tradition of King Solomon, who had many children himself, it does make sense. It, it makes sense as we're we're looking at uncertainties. And there's something, there's something certain about being able to pass on what you have, not just with biological children, but with people you've mentored, you, those young people that you've supported and lifted up, you know, uh, nieces and nephews maybe, or uh, just special friends or just special young people in church. This, this idea that we can nurture future generations or even do things that leave behind, that, that build on that foundation. But it's also then telling those of us who do have children that it's not something we've done. They're not really our kids. It's easy for me to to live into this because my kids aren't really my kids <laughs> and they are legally uh, and everything else, but they weren't born from me and my wife. We consider them a gift from the Lord, a divine reward. And so when we start looking at not just children, but really I think everything as a divine gift, as a gift from the Lord, we start being able to travel through uncertainty in I think a lot more hopeful terms, realizing that we are on this rock for just a short moment, just a blink of the eye in the course of human history, let alone in the course of the history of creation. And yet the things we do build upon that foundation. The things we do leave behind a legacy of peace, hope, love, joy. And regardless of how we do that, when we partner with God, we do leave that legacy and that foundation. Beautiful sound. Our next reading today comes from 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to pick up in verse 13. 1 Peter 3 verse 13. Who will harm you if you are zealous for good? But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak on your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. Act in a way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for doing good, if this could possibly be God's will, than for doing evil. Christ himself suffered on account of sins, once and for all, the righteous one on behalf of the unrighteous. He did this in order to bring you into the presence of God. Christ was put to death as a human, but made alive by the Spirit. And it was by the Spirit that he went to preach to the spirits in prison. 
In the past, these spirits were disobedient when God patiently waited during the time of Noah. Noah built an ark in which a few, that is eight, lives were rescued through water. Baptism is like that. It saves you now. Not because it removes dirt from your body, but because it is the mark of a good conscience towards God. Your salvation comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at God's right hand side. Now that he has gone to heaven, he rules over all angels, authorities, and power. Amen. Again, our our focus this week has been living in uncertainty or living with, uh, facing life's uncertainties, excuse me, something along those lines, facing life's uncertainties. And Peter's talking to a church that is struggling, being persecuted, Uh, finding its bearings, still trying to understand who Christ truly was in the midst of everything else that they knew. And he says this beautiful statement. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet, do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. I, I love this this affirmation, I think this is a great affirmation for us as, as Christians or even just us as people. Don't be ashamed of where your hope is. Be willing to say, this is my hope. And maybe we do it with respectful humility because we don't know all the answers. You know, I, I try to be very clear. I don't know what's going to happen the moment I die. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen after I die. The the, the afterlife story. It's a lot of question marks. My hope is that Jesus will come and be there. My hope is in the assurance of salvation that Peter talks about in the second part of this verse. That's my hope. And I have assurance of that hope. Doesn't mean I have all the answers. Doesn't mean I, you know, I'm not going to say I'm going to float up to heaven and there's going to be pearly gates and all my family and friends are going to be there and the streets are going to be made of gold and I'm going to get a white robe and a harp. And, you know, that those are, those are stories. Those are paintings. Those are books. Those are images. And maybe that's what will happen. Maybe that's what will happen for some people and not other people. I, again, that's not my hope. My hope is in Jesus Christ and the life he offers me today and tomorrow. And so I'm not afraid of what happens because I know it will be in Christ. And I'm not ashamed to share that with whoever wants to hear it. Our reading today. Try I'm on the right page here. Our reading today is from Alan Ward, from the journal, uh, Richard Alan Ward, Ward, from from his journal. Excuse me. You will know that I am among you, and that I, the Lord, am your God. That's from Joel 2.27. Do you know who your God is? Think about that. Do you know that God is among you? Do you know that the Lord watches over you? Have you ever seen those portraits that that have the eyes so contrived that no matter where in the room you are, the eyes are looking at you? As you move from place to place, the eyes of the portrait are still looking at you. God's vision of us is like that except we can leave the presence of the portrait ever gazing upon us. Our sense of God's presence spurs us on to holy living, living in fairness with our families, our colleagues, and everyone with whom we come in contact. Amen. Beautiful. You will know that I am among you. I, the Lord, am your God. Wonderful questions for us to consider in our spiritual life today. And I would encourage you to think about them again 
Maybe not think about the creepy paintings <laughs> eyes following you, but <laughs> I don't know if that's the best image of God. But I like the idea that God's gaze is always fixed on us, not like uh, some, you know, Santa Claus kind of God where, you know, he knows when you've been sleeping, he knows if you awake, he knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. I, I don't think that's what Richard is trying to get at. I think this idea that God is with us and we are the ones who choose to be with God or not, but these questions, I think, are even more important. Do you know who your God is? Uh, and maybe you make assumptions. I think sometimes we all make assumptions about who our God is, whom, you know, sometimes I, when I, when I come in contact with people who, are, who don't believe in God, one of the things I want to know is which God don't you believe in? And as they try to talk to me about the God they don't believe in, we often find similarities between the God they don't believe in and the God I don't believe in or the gods I don't believe in. And so to be clear about who is the God I do believe in, do you know that God is among you? Best of all, God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And do you know that the Lord watches over you? And that is... That's one way to navigate and face life's uncertainties. It's not, again, this, this idea that there's this boogeyman God who's just watching us out to get us, but to know that there is a loving, watchful God, like a parent watches their children as they test the waters, as they go out, as they do things that could hurt themselves and, and, and put themselves in danger. But, you know, as you let them spread their ring, wings and fly, God is watching us and, and always there when we fall and need someone to help pick us up. And we can do that for each other too, because we don't just have to face on unli- life's uncertainties alone. If, if we, if we did face life's uncertainties with God, that should be enough. But thankfully God has placed us in the lives of other people and in the church where we should be able to do that together. And that makes it so much easier than trying to go it alone. Today we pray for those who are struggling. I'm sure you know more than one. I certainly do. People who just need a word of encouragement or just need someone to sit with them, call them, and just be there on the phone. Write a letter, send a text, go grocery shopping with, be at the hospital with. It means so much. And yes, I love I love being able to do that for everybody. I can't do that for everybody in our church. There's just too many people. We can do that with each other. That's that's what we call care, pastoral care. It's something we all do. It's just being there for each other. It's just being a friend. So we need to be friends. And we need to have friends. God's made us, designed us to be in relationship. We're not all extroverts. We don't we're not all the life of the party. We don't always like to be surrounded by huge crowds, but every single person, every single person craves some kind of human contact, social structures. Maybe it's small, intimate. Maybe it's bigger. We're all different in that sense, but we're all designed to be in some kind of social construct. And when we are truly friends, we really get through these times. So let's pray for those who are struggling today. Lord, there are so many in our world who are struggling with illness, with grief, with loss, with pain, those who suffer, those who are alone. Just allow us to be a friend as you were a friend to us. Allow us to love as you offered us love. Allow us to encourage others so you continue to encourage us throughout these uncertain times. We pray this in your holy name, praying the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow, I leave you with the benediction. Send us, Lord, as evangels of hope and security to all those whose paths we will cross this week. Until tomorrow, friends, goodbye.